Like, just switching it here on for the Valiant is not going to be, like, an easy, you know, road for them to take the point. You see the shock going back, they'll switch things up, bring out their own triple tank triple support, but th these players for the Valiant did not play at all, really, during stage one together. And, you know, you speak to some teams around the league, and... You know, if you're on the, if you're on the bench, you don't really get a ton of scrim time. I will say this though: I hung out with the Valiant, and they've been scrimming all stage break, like the entire. Even thing. the players on the bench. They, they did, yep, they didn't take a break at all. Obviously, they had a little bit of time. They weren't in the playoffs, but they were taking this very seriously. Let's see the fruits of their labor. Let's see if they're ripe yet. Perhaps not. Iziaki, oh, he's in trouble here. One more. Violet looking very comfortable there, just with the AD AD. So Bunny's had uh, obviously two really short fights, but. Two fights as opposed to Sinatra's one, and Sinatra's passed him up in terms of his Graviton Surge charge time. As we know, Sinatra uh, is decorated with many records for top damage dealing, and look, a big part of that is him staying alive, but more importantly, getting charged awfully quickly. And the Shock really happy to lean into this 3-3 now. This is their bread and butter. This is how they got to second place in stage one, man. Ooh. Is he actually dead already, Sinatra? Must have flanked around, he must have been up on the high ground, boosting himself up with a right click, and the Valiant have to commit regardless. It's 97% on the clock, and the Shock are just really in cruise control right now. Throwing out the Graviton oh. Surge, straight on in. Signs of resistance, minimal. Signs of life, none. Space Navi desuited. And yeah, back to spawn with him. Izyaki won't get there in time. About as one-sided as you like there in that second round. I mean, Busan is the Shocks. Yeah, once you went to triple tank, triple support, you got nothing for the Valiant. Bunny finishes with an average energy of 11 there. Didn't even get the grab. No, almost three minutes charge time to Sinatra's a minute 16. Shaka looking like, uh, you know, just picking up where they left off there at the end of stage one. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. Succinct map one as the uh, San Francisco Shock take the stage. It was quick. And take Busan almost instantly. The first round, a little bit more back and forth. The Valiant tried to get some use out of KSF's Widowmaker. Tried to make that work, but the Shock did not give them any room to set up around. At least the Valiant are trying something different. Didn't exactly work out there, but at least you're seeing them trying to get you know, some use out of the depth on the roster, right? You no know, putting Bunny in as Tracer, and then KSF bringing him in to play some Widowmaker. Just didn't pay off. Didn't really get enough from either of those guys. Like when you're, I feel like when you're in a specialist position, like you really need to come in and make a difference. Like, like when we used to see Spree come in for the Houston Outlaws, right? Spree was really like, I know there's Aria player. He would come in, play Zarya, play at an extremely high level. I think those guys can do it. Just against the Shock, it's gonna be tough. Again, it's a little bit easy for one specialist player just to, you know, integrate into the team in between maps, whereas two, then everything starts to change. The the structure of your communication, roles, all of that. 
It was. Uh, it, it did look like the Valiant didn't quite know where to uh, be going, he, especially on that second round. They lost the first fight. It does often happen yeah. that you're at a huge disadvantage if that happens, but they were not able to rest things back. I mean, the amount of times I just saw Violet able to line Izzyaki up down range but, and finish him off 1v1. When you have a team as coordinated as the Shark going up against the team who's just trying to figure out what they are right now, I think yep. you're going to see results like that. Let's have a look at a, a bit of a comparison between our main supports. We didn't get much uh, talk about them uh, over that last map, but you can see here, pretty considerable difference. Now, players knocked back kind of hinges on you being alive. You see Custer is just, got, he's got that crossfade on heal, man, but Moth, he's been getting out there. Yeah, I mean, but with how uh, the, the new Lucio Boop is, right? You know, the, the Boop's are pretty strong right now. It's 31 players knocked back. Pretty good. The deaths, obviously, no favor Moth there with one. Uh, Custa, uh, not really much you can do when you're just kind of speeding your team in and they're just kind of uh, dying really quickly. So not not a lot you can do there if you're Custa. That's that classic grimace we're getting used to seeing on Custa's face when, uh, you know, in between those rounds when he's up on the stage. They realize it's a long road from here. Being 0-7, can definitely affect their end of season chances, but Agility's now comes in with Bunny. Is that new haircut, Sam? Yeah, it looks like it. Cleaned it up a little bit. Um, in between stages, you gotta do that type of stuff. Yeah. I, I, I got to chat, like I said, with the guys over over the break, and Agility's looked at me, he's like, yo, we are spending a lot of time practicing, man. Like, I'm like, what are you up to, man? You've been chilling? He's like, dead look in his face, like, nope. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We've been practicing, man. Did you see like, us playing st in stage one? No, we ain't chilling. Yeah, absolutely not. They realize uh, the magnitude of what lies ahead of them, and especially the opponent that stands in their way, the Shark, without a barely a scratch on them. The Valiant have to find a way, find a weakness, and exploit it. I tell you what though, like, I feel like getting one win for the Valiant, like, is gonna be pretty tough, just because, like, the, you get so used to losing, and like, it's kind of weird to say that, but like, it just kind of becomes the norm, that to like, get that momentum in the positive direction, like, takes a while, like, and it's not something where, like, you kind of come home and... It's going to be tough for these guys because they were so strong last year, right? And then to come in with what you thought would be a stronger roster, adding, like, is the Aki in, moving free DPS, to just kind of, like, get hit in the face in stage one like this has to be tough. And a bounce back from that has to be harder. Uh, cool look here from the shot on D. Uh, no Brigitte, so they're going actually running Batiste triple, triple instead support. of Brick. With, yeah, yeah, Batiste instead of the Brigitte. So they'll be running uh, no, Batiste, Zenyatta, and Lucio in terms of supports with the Reinhardt. Interesting. Again, a bit more burst healing uh, available in a pinch than Brigitte has, I guess, if you're just going to use that Biotic launcher to throw grenades out. Uh, weren't we saying before that we should give Batiste two grenade launchers? Yes, I, I, I said that in the back. Uh, I don't actually I like believe that. it. Oh, I think it would be cool. No. No? Oh, all right. I will die on that hill. KSF now sets Roadhog a grenade. <laughs> oh my gosh. No. Okay, don't do that. Okay, the shock set up on the high ground. So they, look, they, um, they give a lot of ground, at least over to the Valiant team. They're going to let them push in, but they're really trying to collapse on them. That's what they want to do. They're playing over to, well, you know, two high ground positions here. The, the Shark need to play this. So you don't want to give sight lines to KSF playing Widowmaker all the way at the gate, right? They'll get an easy pick on like a support. And they have the Rascal, so like Batiste's able to, you know, deliver you some of that hit scan based damage. Comes in three shot bursts and it's you not know, always as easy to, to really make the mark with. Okay, Super's knocked down. This could be an issue. Rascal now. Needs to be very careful. He can still get picked off with a headshot from KSF, so he needs to hide around the corner. Or duel the Widow, that's also fine, I guess. Depends how you're feeling on any given day. And he has the amplification matrix here. You can use it to, you know, get one of these big volleys out of Violet. Or maybe you're just really trying to you're set up for extra healing as well. Oh, no, no, just get rid of fate. Okay. All the super fire strike from the super. gets an amped fire strike. That's, that's gross. That is, what, 200 damage fire strike? Yeah, I saw. Uh, uh, so it's it would be instant death fire. Yeah, I saw a clip from uh, Poco where he had like a, this, somebody on the other team like a four-player fire strike to that. But uh, you see the Valiant still here. You know they have a pretty mobile comps, so they're able to get back to the point. Test him rather quickly. Rascal gets really low here. Need to keep him alive. I mean, EMP is impending. Space is again on the somber. He's going to go for it. They've lost the duel. He's here, but I want to commit one way or another. The trans comes out perfect timing. He's able to resurrect here. He does. He gets the duel. He's back, but you're right. The trans staved off that EMP map. And Super just walked into a minefield without a care in the world. Sinatra will get some energy off of him as he uh, does blunder through a couple of those explosives. And the Valiant don't have much of a presence on the ground, map. Oh. Okay, that's a grab from Sinatra, placed it very far forward. Why not? Again, if he can give him, uh, the rest of his team some old charge from that, he's not complaining. But it's interesting, right? After space sort of EMPs and there's a transcendence for the shock, the Valiant 
Nothing that much more. I guess they were just hoping KSF would find picks for them, but it, the shock were hiding. And I think when you're, you're when you're on the side of the valley, I mean, you have this nano boost to use, right? You, you don't have the EMP right now. You don't have anything else. Like maybe use the nano and you consider switching off of it. But with the lineup they have in the game, this is kind of what you think that they'd be running with. Do you nano agilities while he goes for barrage just for that extra durability? Uh, it, it doesn't feel great to do, but here's another ramp. I guess. Are they going to nano on the fate? Rascal a little bit low, trying to hide back behind that one. Also, Immortality Field dropped in the corner there. Should it be required? Oh, Custer. Rascal wanted to go for the 1v1 there. Well, it wasn't quite a 1v1, but trying to keep Joy Hoban alive, but Joy Hoban gets desuited, goes for the self-destruct here. Exo boots from Rascal to try and get some height, but he is taking some interesting fights. But if he can bait a commitment into that corner, oh, nice use of the field there. The Immortality kept him up, but KSF finally finds a pick. Rascal gets headshot and removed. And his immortality field is now gone. A barrage from Agilities, but most of it's eaten up by the defense matrix. Sinatra is able to get rid of Agilities. Fate's low. And now Super's going to lay down that Earth Shatter. Should it be required, but it may not be. Custer would like to try and get rid of Sinatra, who's won. Custer's looking for the kill, but he will be denied it. Frustrated, he has to resort to resting fate. Only three tanks here, though, for the San Francisco Shock. You're going to get the supports back in the mix. Rascal comes up as Brigitte tried to get a heal on the Super right away. It's taken out though, it's finally the Valiant that break in this. Nice job by KSF there. Three headshots to finish the fight. I'd be pleased to end it in that fashion. That was what the Valiant were trying to do. Force the shock into the open. Now we get a view from the man himself here. Definitely aggressive positioning for a Widow, but he knew the fight was almost at his climax. He just had to find his last three. Very nice. All right, Sinatra, another early crap from him. I kind of like this. Yeah. I think the Shock learned this, to be honest, against the Vancouver Titans. We really started seeing them do that a lot. It, he builds them so quick. It, it, it doesn't, I mean, if you can get an easy fight win off of it, build up some ult charge and some other players, you, you may as well use it. Especially in the Noah scenario where players aren't spread out and whatnot, they'll be able to win. Uh, Valiant switch everything pretty much here. I see Fate now go over and play Reinhardt. KSF gonna play Zarya, so. Uh, you do have the two tanks, three supports, uh, no Zenyatta, you're going to have Viana. Okay. And uh, you have Space, who's still playing around this EMP, then you think he probably switches. Fate will get much more durability and more opportunity to charge up those Earth Shadows if he's given Nano Boost. Um, is he Arcus Bardic Grenade is something to look out for in the next fight, when Violet will try to go for a Transcendence? He'll, he'll, they'll really have to force Violet to use it. They don't have a Graviton Surge just to, just to make him go for that. We'll see that now, the EMP. Yeah, there's the Transcendence, so... At this stage, Izayaki definitely looking to try and punish some of his healing. Super did get bioed very low. He's able to hide behind the wall, though, but charge. Fate comes out of absolutely nowhere, looking for the pin. Rascal is extremely low, but Fate now seems to be out at sea. Yeah, and I wonder if Space actually thought he was going to hit Izayaki with that EMP, because he knows that Izayaki is playing up on that high ground. On the, I mean, uh, on Violet is playing up on the high ground. And he jumps up, and he, think, and he uses the EMP, but it doesn't actually connect with Violet on top of that little platform, and Violet's able to get that transcendence off. Moth played the high ground here. Again, if he can sort of knock someone off the high ground with the Valiant so bold, or ideally Moth would probably follow the Valiant, and if anyone, as they cross the bridge, he can knock someone into the moat below and force a rotation out of them. Oh, that's so close! Huge fire strike from Super, he already had the shatter. But, but this allows him to not really use any of those oh. big game-changing ults and win a fight. You can't just kind of storm in there. And so, oh, here we go. Oh, I'm surprised they decided to kill space. That's this one way to send a message. Yeah, I mean, Violet already up to another transcendence. You did use Rally during that in self-destruct. But I, you know, coming back into it, I would not be surprised to see Sinatra with another early, you know, Graviton Surge, right? You start building some of the other ultimates that you have, and you can just keep cycling them here. Violet has to be happy that he's almost got another train. He has his transcendence back just as KSF returns with the Graviton Surge. Keeping that ultimate in step with the enemy's eye, and that's going to be a rally from Adilities. Here comes the push. Rascal forced the shield bash out of the way, and that's the Graviton Surge. Used early, used often is the philosophy from Sinatra, but he goes down early in this fight. Fate able to pin Super up against the sarcophagus, and now everyone from the Shock is bundled off the point unceremoniously. Valiant can set up here, and the Shock, well, yes, they can go for a stall. They have to rely on the sound barrier from Moth, uses that now. To give them the durability as they push on, they manage to contest. Moth is there. 
Super looking for an Earth Shatter opportunity, waiting for Fate to make one mistake. Drop his shield for one moment, he's going for it. No, doesn't quite work out here. Tusta now going for the sound barrel with a transcendence here from Izayaki. Everything's coming up pretty well for the Valiant. Rascal is down, but Moth is still contesting for the time being. You do have Sinatra still here on the point, and Moth is... Cheyobin just gonna have to come out, contest this here. Is oh, not able to make it back out. But I do want to say, say, when the Graviton Surge comes out from Sinatra, the way that the Valiants are able to get through, it's a huge Earth Shatter that comes out from Fate. And then they push on through using their own Graviton Surge there. Really nice play from the Valiant to complete the map with 19 seconds to go. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Too shabby at all from the hometown team. Here on the attacking side, of the Temple of Anubis. They were able to get it done pretty well on defense here. The shock. Only 19 seconds left for the Los Angeles Valley. So not a huge time bank map, but yeah. they still are able to guarantee themselves another run through the map should San Francisco finish their attack. You yeah, know, we'll see what the Shark decided to do on their attack. Uh, this is the replay from Fate's POV. So they get stuck up on the grab here on the pole, and you see it's the big That's Earth Shatter that lines it up. There's the Graviton oh, Surge man. that comes down. That's exactly what I was talking about towards the end there. That really it was the, the combination of ultimates that spiraled it in the Valiant's favor. Yeah, it may be hard to notice the Earth Shatter because when everyone gets grabbed, they sort of get pulled off out of that sort of laying down position. It's also kind of risky because with the way the grab like interacts with the the pole and the pillar, like, yeah, yeah, I'm sure some of you guys that play at home, you know, like, sometimes you get, like, jolted back, yeah. and, like, you're kind of moving around a little bit. It's hard to know where you're going to end up exactly. So there you go. That Earth Shadow may have been hidden among there all the go. other effects. So they This is aggressive. Yeah, Reinhardt into all of these damage dealers. Usually, like we, uh, we talked about last stage, when you see all the damage dealers come in, you see Winston 3-3, if anything, then they ought to go with a Batiste option of the Reinhardt composition. Such aggressive position from KSF, and even Agility's hovering awfully close to the shock. Oh, that's not good for the Valiant. Uh, Izayaki gets picked off. Looks like Moth just went coast to coast to try and find him. Ah, uh, well, space going down here as well. Izayaki being brought back into the fight, but when you're resurrecting Inanna, you know that you're probably not gonna be able to get a whole lot done with that rascal. Cheeky little one tap. Now, obviously, really early on, I feel like this is the best use of Batiste we've seen thus far. As uh, Rascal, you know, has made an impact being able to be a hit scan to take Farah and, uh, you know, take the battles with the Widowmaker at range, but also to amp up the amount of damage. I mean, the damage amplified is about 500 right now for Rascal. And now you're going to see, you know, the, the, the amp field go down. We'll see if he can do anything with it. A nice immortality field there to keep Violet alive. Now that he's down, Izayaki managed to get rid of it. Rascal now yes. maybe wanting to take a little bit of a step back. It's a transcendence in the fight for Violet here. Fate is still looking to really punish those backliners right now. You can see Sinatra being buffeted it around. Sinatra is approaching his Graviton Surge, his first one for this half. 
But the Shock have Prime and Pole position on the point right now, and Super has a Shatter, you know what that means. It's gonna get messy. Sinatra now lets the grab go again. He lets it go down range. He knows that Space wasn't there to deal with it. And even an Immortality Field just to help things out. The Shock have breezed through this one very quickly. Space gets these suited as forced into a self destruct but Super has the barrier. He lets it go. Then the Shatter, which doesn't quite connect, and Space is still able to resuit. It don't matter though. The Shock absolutely crush it on that attacking side. We expect no less from a team of this caliber. The Valiant, again, we're put on the back foot off the beginning. Struggle to climb back in, but now we'll go back into it all again. One minute left for the Valiant. Shock with six minutes, 44. Valiant are no stranger to daunting tasks and being behind at the half and well they might be looking down at that one again. They have a minute left and they have to attack first. The Shock have amassed a gargantuan time banger yeah. to rely on. So that is the fastest Anubis we've seen so far this year. This year? Uh, this year. Right. This season for the uh, for San Francisco Shock uh, yeah. in general. So really good there as uh, the Valiant they'll opt to just go back and run a traditional triple tank triple support. Uh, Rath still playing the Batiste, who's made a real big difference. I mean, 41% of the team's healing right now is Rascal. Uh, healing at a clip of uh, 14k every 10 minutes uh, right now, like a, a little bit at 12,000 about. So that's more healing than anyone on his team is doing damage yep. per turn. I mean, getting, a, getting the amplification matrix every you know, 55 seconds. So, I mean, I'm putting up uh, pretty impressive numbers here on Batiste. Super, oh, he's been caught in a bit of a nasty duel. Oh, no, that one's just been destroyed. In fact, it just gave enough of a window. Rascal, nice job. That immortality field gave just enough time to heal Super back up. I mean, he saved uh, Violet with it as well. From the previous Very round. clutch use of that ability. He only needs it to be around for a second or so. Once it's destroyed, it's already done its job. I really love that application of that ability because he does so much healing in general. Rascal, another immortality field thrown in and out of shock. No, can, they can get a little bit aggressive. Super with the shatter. He lays it down. Is Iyaki forced to do a transcendence? But they've already lost fate in their main tank. And they've lost their best opportunity at capturing point A. Super now can just prance back to point. And that is already it. Valley had only had a minute. And it wasn't enough. Oh, there, there was so much damage, though, that just went down through. Moth was cringy. Oh, uh, yeah. Actually well, cringy. Well, no, I, I get why. Because when, when Super shatters them, uh, you have the amplification matrix that comes out from Rascal. And before his use of that one, he's at about 550 damage amplified. It jumps up to 924 <laughs> after that use. A lot of damage went through there onto the Valiant. You see, Twitch, that is actually cringe. That, when he cringed, that was cringe. Everything else you say is cringe is actually not cringe because you're 12. That was cringe. Wow, that was, that was an aggressive outburst out of nowhere. Well, it's like, no, it's the same thing with the, the, the C9 thing. Sometimes you just got to lay it down and let them know. <laughs> Six minutes and 44 on the I mean, clock. You can let them shot. know in a nice manner. I mean, that was quite rude. I think they deserve an apology. No, I think they're okay. Okay. I won't apologize on your behalf. That wasn't me that did it. It's an after tracer. That would be fun. We see the hover here. The Shock know they have a lot of time. I feel it. Jill with these having the musical chairs here for the Shock. Look, so last time the Valiant defended here, they played KSF very far forward, um, not expecting or assuming there would be a win. So now we're correct. The Shock almost always prefer to run super on the right heart. But Rascal has exo boots. He can jump. He can get to that high ground. He'll 1v1 you. <laughs> See how uh, they decide to play this. The last time they used the immortality field to actually get through towards the left hand side, it was a really early use. Keep some players up as they moved on in. Three players actually get caught here for the shock. So you have Rascal, Violet, and Chayobin who are, are they actually cool? stuck to the left. Or will they, they just pick they some to play a little bit further away? I mean, it's Chayobin and Rascal who can both jump to the high ground on agility. has already gone down. I mean, I know Custer would like to try and resurrect that, but there is no way the shock are going to let him get away with that. No way! 
Ah, yeah, I mean, that, that happened. You were making fun of the chat for yes, C9, that, that and then an, we yes, just saw the Valiant. That is an actual C9 as well. So you, you got have, what you deserve. All right, guys, you got actual cringe and actual C9 in one map. This is the first and last time this is ever going to happen. All right, well, we'll be back after half time. Much to talk about, I'm sure. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. High ground or low ground, T-Mobile has you covered. And by State Farm. Whatever life brings your way, State Farm is here to help life go right. San Francisco Shock are trying to keep a tight grip on that California Cup. They're putting in work so far in this one of 2-0 over the Valiant at the break. Welcome back, everyone. Malik here with Bryn and Sideshow. Uh, guys, I would say that Sinatra is not about that kiddie pool life because he's definitely showing off how deep his hero pool is. We got to see this man pop off on Sombra on Busan. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty great. Pretty great little, uh, little segue there talking about Sinatra's hero pool. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> he's... He is a player that has a lot of potential, and I think yeah. he's starting to have that realized. In season one, we knew that he was a player that they were very much focused on developing, but I'm going to be honest, we didn't see too much development from him. Yeah. The, the general public opinion, actually, was that maybe he was even a little bit overrated towards the end of the 2018 season. But I now don't that think he's that's got. Fair, though. Like, no, well, no I, no, I don't think that was fair not at all. then, and it certainly isn't now. I also don't think it's fair to say that he hasn't had too much improvement. I mean, just to point out a couple of the key statistics here as well, I mean, one death. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's not bad. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think Sinatra is a player who has improved, but just in ways that people don't really see much. And oh, no, I think he's improved massively. Not yeah. feeding as much. Because <laughs> he used, to, he used yeah. to just feed his little brain out, you know? Yeah, he was a very aggressive <laughs> player. And I yeah. think that's credit to the coaching staff at the San Francisco Shock, and also just working with such a young player. They just have so much room to develop as well. And now he's he's really coming into really his good. own. And, yeah, working very well with Super as well. Yeah. Like he's getting, they're all getting very comfortable. Even, uh, like you said, Rascal. Uh, it was really cool actually seeing Rascal play some Batiste in this matchup. What did you guys think of that? Was it a efficient I, Batiste gameplay? I like it. Honestly, I like yeah. it on Anubis. There's a lot of high ground you can use his, his little, I don't know what his boots are called, mega boots, mega jump boots. Yeah, mega jump boots. Mega That's jump boots. That's not about right. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I, I don't get paid to analyze or anything. But the, uh, yeah, I think it works really well on Anubis because, again, you can see right there, you can get up onto the high ground nice and easily. Yeah. It works very well in terms of this composition they're running. They're very familiar with how to run the triple time, triple supports. Seems to slot in very nicely, specifically on this section of Anubis. Yes, the Brigitte doesn't really get that much value when you're playing this uh, area of Anubis because you're either holding on the high ground and then you, you're not within range or you have to drop down to the low ground and you're not that useful. What's that number? That is another one death. <laughs> oh, one death? Oh, death's wow. prevented as That's well. With his uh, With his immortality field, he got a really clutch... Uh, 
immortality field at some point as well. Yeah. So I like this track. It, it's a cool one from the San Francisco Shock. We're wondering, you know, how is Pratis going to be involved in a lot of these comps? This seems like a good... It, it is map-specific, though. Yes. If you're expecting to see this become the dominant comp, I don't think it'll work out on every map. Right. But, but on this, where you've got a lot of high ground that you can play on and the brig isn't that useful, yeah, sure. Yeah. I, I will say, though, I love seeing uh, Batiste out there. I love seeing the, the tactical crouch he does. It's like a true yeah, tactical yeah. crouch. <laughs> power up that yeah, power. Yeah, really is. Well, guys, uh, now the Shock are coming off one of the most epic stage finals in history of the Overwatch League. Now, while they came up just short against the Vancouver Titans, they still proved to belong in the top tier of the league. We've got an inside look at what those finals sounded like for both teams in our latest edition of Inside the Comms. There is a special spot in the book of esports history for champions here in the Overwatch League. Okay. Uh, yep. Yeah. The Vancouver Titans. Look at these ugly, sloppy players. Barker took out. One's a month. Yeah, that's it, man. I think I'm starting up. They're definitely scared of us. Yeah, 100%. I know they are. Last match game, we need to play our game and pummel these kids. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, yo, three, two, one. Okay. Let's go, boys. Vancouver, one, two, three. Some noise as we're heading to our stage one final. That's fine. We suck at that map, it's okay. Yeah, it's fine. Now we win. Yeah, yeah. Jenna left to carry, 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 carry! Nice! It's our worst map and we won. That's so bad! Okay, okay. Now, the kings of the jungle have to assert themselves. Nice! 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 We're so much better. Let's go. Is this where it ends? Is this where the shock hold off the Titans? It all ends here on Rialto! Remember the Titans though, they are still in a great spot to take this all the way here. That was a haymaker of a round. The shock, they only have one minute. One minute on this map. We can still win, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, really, I believe. Really. Don't be scared, guys. This is just a first point hold. That's all this is. That's just a full hold. Now we know what the Titans need to do. It's simple. <laughs> Cuban Titans take what was promised to them. Your stage one champions. Oh, GG. Let's focus. Oh, God, God is so kind, bro. Good job, everyone. I'm yeah. really proud of you guys. Good job. That's so sick. I, I like it. that both teams pointed out that they are so much better than the other team. <laughs> yeah. That was probably my favorite part of that whole thing. I love how harsh Super was at the beginning. He sees the, the, the walker, calls them ugly, sloppy players. <laughs> <laughs> That's so brutal, but, man. I think for me, it was the ending as well. Sinatra as well, saying how proud he was of his team, yeah, despite yeah. them losing. Oh, Sinatra is quite, yeah. quite a nice, positive He really is, yeah. Right. Like his, own, his persona, when he's like streaming, you think of him as quite a toxic young lad. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's not. He's, you know, he's a yeah. wholesome boy, and he, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Eleven for it. Really. Yeah. Yeah. It was so much fun. That was fun to watch. Fun to watch. All right. Well, let's get back to the match, guys. Uh, San Francisco Shock still dominating up to well. Anything the Valiant can do right now to get into this game. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that. There, there is roster that's still in the middle of rebuilding. I think that that's the the point. I mean, we yeah. we we casted them while they were doing this California yes, Cup yeah, showdown before. We saw the Valiant come out swinging the first time, and then Shock replied. And at the moment, it's it's a rough position for the Valiant to be in. But but in the future, they can definitely hoist this trophy back. But it's going to be tough to come back now. I agree. Yeah. I mean, what, what more would you like me to add on to this? I don't know. You'd be very polite T about Tell it. me that Custer's going to be cloned and we're just going to have six Custers up on the stage. I'm looking forward to the next uh, episode of Custer's News Network. I'll tell you that for free. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a good one. Well, we said it yesterday. When you're at the bottom, there's only one direction you can move in. And we're going to see if the Valiant can find some semblance of life coming up in the second half. Stay tuned. They don't just play for a team. They play for every fan. Every rival, 
every moment, every match. And when everyone watching expects the best, they perform with the best. Tidings from the City of Angels, especially if you're an LA fan. 2-0 down in this series for the Valley. The Shock are looking dominant as ever, yeah. dominant as we expected. And perhaps we didn't expect the greatest performances from the Valley, but this has been pretty quiet from them. Look, I mean, the Valley have had a ton of time to practice. Uh, I know you decided on the, you know, some of the lineup changes you want to make coming into this stage. Uh, we just haven't seen it work out this far. And I think when you go up against a team that's a well-oiled machine like the Shock, you're going to see results like this, at least early on. And again, the Shock, having that extra stage experience of having played in the playoffs, had a lot of time in between that as well to prepare themselves to go up against the Titans. So, you know, uh, you know, a bit of A, a bit of B. It also happens as well. If you fall on, like, tougher times in the league or you're not getting wins or maybe your scrims aren't turning out the way you like them to, you don't always have the chance to scrim everyone. Some teams might say, look, look yeah. you know, no offense, you guys are struggling right now. We'd rather sort of keep getting out ahead instead of what, sort of what, teaching. I mean, when I when I coach teams, uh, you know, in Call of Duty, like that, we we wouldn't play teams that we felt like could really give us a run. And I imagine, you know, for some of those other teams, it was pretty difficult to get like consistent games. It's very like minor thing. No leaks. Not like we know anything. I'm quite sure the Valiant have plenty of uh, Overwatch teams to play against. But Blizzard World will be our next map. I haven't seen this one in a while. Well, we saw it just before, but in a while. We see a lot of Sombra on this map. So maybe we'll see a bit more of that showcase from space. Troy Hoban obviously gripping that mouse as he was. Just trying to limber up a little bit before he jumps back in the, the pilot seat of the Valiant. The Valiant need a, a, a map win in like just the same fashion we just saw the Shark win like a new It's like something that like everybody's so tense up there. Like you can just kind of like, you look up, you see the guys, you just feel the vibe. Like is it great? Like they just need a, like a, like a, a, a ridiculous win that everybody can just kind of laugh and rally behind. Like these games, especially because like it, it, it's so, it, it, it sucks to lose these games when like they're so close. Like you'd rather just get blown out. But, like some of the series that they've had that have gone the distance and you still lose, it makes the next series like yeah. 10 times harder. Uh, NYXL, Hangzhou Spark, those were two series the Valiant went to about five maps and lost it. Takes the wind out of you. But they'll be on the attack to start with, so no time to ponder on previous defeats. I like this Pretty match. They got the Hanzo and the Farah. So they're gonna run triple DPS. Uh, again, so they'll run uh, Izzyaki on the Ana. Then you have Custer playing Mercy, so it'll be the solo thing. Uh, the 
Batiste version of the Reinhardt triple tank triple support. Seems to be the go-to for the shock yeah. right now. Well, look, it provides him a little bit of a hit scan here against Agility's end. It allows uh, you know him to provide a ton of healing. Well, now with like Brigitte not you know being able to shield bashes easily, they want to go for some a third support that gives plenty of healing. Right? There's not a ton of there's not a ton of flankers here. To, uh, you know, I mean, you could get the shield bash onto the Sombra, obviously, but to have it just for the Sombra, I think uh, I think Batiste, just the utility that he provides in other areas, just outweighs that. The shocking looking pretty comfortable right now. It looks like Fate is trying to roll around and find someone to unseat, but the Shock seem pretty unbothered by the presence of the Wrecking Ball in general. Are you surprised that we've seen so many damage dealing comps come out from the Valiant? Considering, I think when you look at their roster, the one thing you would have said is that their damage dealers are not their strongest portion of it. Yeah, but I mean, we, we also saw them obviously play in a 3-3 dominated meta and they didn't seem to be all that comfortable there either. Oh, oh Rascal! Nice shot. Head plucked like an apple. And KSF now Dragon Strike. This will force the Shock to play the left side. And will hopefully allow the Valiant to line up a couple more kills if they're trying to take this point. KSF's managed to get back behind it, but the Valiant, again, where is their anchor point? Where What are they playing around? Because Fate is playing a bit like a flanker on this Wrecking Ball. Where is their pivot point? So that'll be the EMP that comes out from Super. And Nano boost here being used as Gotta well as... Oh! Uh, he was nano boosted! Rascal comes back, not playing Batiste, will play the Brigitte now, but... It, I just found it interesting that I, I think when you look at the Valiant, I think, like, you could you could do some... Real, like, I really love the tank duo's bait and space, and I think Izayaki's been great. I just don't know if their strength is to play triple DPS. I don't think they really know what to... Like, we've seen the Valiant get the first kill, but their transition into capturing the point or getting that second kill seemed really shaky. I, I will say when uh, when you did a KSF using his uh, Dragon Strike before, it was a really nice hack by Space under Treyoven. Treyoven was actually flying in to eat it, but he got hacked by Space, wasn't able to do so. So you have to burn the res here on a KSF, get him up. The Shock can't engage on a five-man Valiant with uh, with Fate behind them on the Wrecking Ball trying to capture the KSF and Izayaki both getting caught in the grab there. Izayaki on down. Space trying to ball pull, pull people back to the point is the Sombra, but he's being ignored essentially. One minute remains for the Los Angeles Valiant to find something, an opening. And, and I think you, if you're the Valiant, you have to have some variation of this composition and be able to play it at a high level. Uh, you see the shot getting close to having you no know, five ultimates, the Graviton Surge just used there from Sinatra. But what are you going to get here? from the Valiant that is going to unlock the point. I mean, we might see Fate trying to use Minefield to keep the Shock on that side of the point. He did that and tried to but zone the Shock out. That, but they'll eat it all up here. Yep. Yeah, Transcendence being used. Yeah. Sinatra will get easy charge by giving Super or someone similar a bubble as he walks yeah. through the Minefield. What next? Dragon Strike again. Another ultimate used to force positioning, but it doesn't really scare the Shock. Super does finally go down after using that Earth Shatter. Two Kobe is a little bit low, but the Sound Barrier here, Fate needs to be very careful. Rascal switching over towards the Brig means that it's harder for Fate just to roll in and out of these fights. Agilities again, despite being Nano Boost, who got taken very low, is able to back away. And you saw the orbs flying from Violet. He's looking to take Agilities down himself. Is that you're going to use two Nano Boosts here, both of them on to Agilities. As Super comes back on Wrecking Ball, that'll be a big EMP from space. Now, KSF and Agilities now following up on that one nicely. A second for Agilities in this fight, and over the point now, a jubilant roar from the Farah player. As Trichobin finally is desuited, and Super will try and stall for just a little longer. The Valiant finally found their opening on this point, and they'll get to continue to play some Overwatch. So, uh, do they stay with the same composition? It looks like a place here, just going up, trying to poke down for some damage. It looks like they will. Super changes off of Wrecking Ball is going to okay. go play Winston now. So a little bit of a trade here. It's going to be a grab that comes through from two for one. Sinatra, yeah. Now you're going to just push them back. <laughs> Very unceremonious end for those two. Again, like, he's Sinatra's gonna, that guy. Like he's going to change. No. Uh, maybe a Sombra play here. Yep. Yep. We see a lot of Sombra on this map. It's very easy for Sombra to get behind the opponents. With so much high ground, so many ways to, you know, wheedle in through the back. Also, the fact that Sombra's invisible. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Is it, it's, it's impossible <laughs> to spy check adequately, like just to spam. Yeah. 
So Sarge can just walk around. So he'll get pretty much free hacks as long as he needs them. This is where you start to get into the rock, paper, scissors type of game, right? Where they see the shot make these changes, now the Valiant makes changes, and they'll be running the Winston version of the triple tank triple support. Now maybe that's what they're trying to do with their DPS combos at the beginning, is to force some changes out of the shock so they can come back to a composition like this with an ult advantage. I mean, it hasn't worked really. If today. you're the shock, sure. You probably want the Valiant to try and play 3-3 against you. That was where the shock looked very good. Last stage. And it wasn't that long ago. Is he arcing down early? Sinatra found him in the back line immediately. Super says, let's go. Sinatra, however, had other ideas. He pulls out, but again, Super wasn't interested in getting kills. If he forced the Valiant back, that will be enough for him. Gets a repair pack. And now he's back to full health again. So you're going to have an EMP. Oh, you're going to have all six ultimates here. Yeah. For the shock. So this is a fight where the Valiant... They kind of know they're walking into a, a lost fight, trying to get as many ultimates out as possible. I mean, Sinatra got caught there, plain and simple. The fact that he gets the EMP and then get out alive is ridiculous. And up, oh, see you, Custer. Swim between the flags, bro. I mean, for the Valiant, though, you did get the shock to invest three ultimates into this fight. So, Jolie's up. There you go. Off the side. Uh, you did get the shock to invest half of their ultimates there. Primal Rage, EMP, and the Rally. So you do have an ultimate advantage coming into this next fight. Uh, problem is you only got 15 seconds to make something happen. With it. It's often been the Valiant's problem. It's just taking them too long to come up with an answer. Well, let's hope Transcendence and Graviton also a self-destruct are an answer for them here. They're going to push forward. Very far forward in Fantasy. Fate with their Primal Rage again. Hoping to at least give his team a bit of freedom to push up. Fight just needs to not die here, which probably should be fine. And I don't think the Shock mind giving this space right now. I think they feel pretty confident where the payload is that they can match it. No grab for the Shock, remember that. Sinatra's actually playing the Sombra and not the Zarya. So it's one less fight, potentially fight winning ultimate, but they trade it in for the EMP, which is fantastic even on its own. Sinatra is just a long way away from it. I think the Shock are trying to give him time to get there, but they have two support ultimates, which is also important. Here over to the high ground. That was Violet now going for the Transcendence here. KSF still waiting. He's managed to get the Transcendence out. Now Izzy goes for his. There might be time to seal the deal for the Valiant. They know they've got a long way to travel. They don't want to spend all their ultimates at once here. Take it slow on both sides. Oh, KSF! Uh. Oh, his Graviton got eaten! The win condition for the Los Angeles Valiant is now gone. They've got to resort to the Sound Barrier, but the Sound Barrier gets ripped off them. Sinatra drops in with an EMP and it lights out. And both senses are the word term. And that looks pretty darn good now for the Shock to take map number three as well. Cool, calm, collected, and confident. And the Valiant need to find a way to stop them now. They're going to break upon them like a wave. We'll see you after these messages. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Looks like the California Cup, the very embodiment of the rivalry between North and South here. Probably staying in the Bay Area for the time being. The Shock are pretty close to closing out this series, at least in terms of maps. There will be a fourth map still to be played. 
However, a 3 0 is looking more and more likely. Then, uh, you know, it's been a, a tough series for the Valiant thus far. Uh, you know, KSF is Graviton Surge getting eaten there at the end. I mean, yeah, they had to reset in the break. They, I mean, they really had to start again, start fresh in some sense with this roster. See, Troy Hoban, this was the, this is the backbreaker. Just before he was stunned. Just before he was stunned, he eats up that grab. So it's tough, man. Like we were talking about before, like the, the Valiant, like the, the, the vibes aren't great on stage, right? There's so many Valiant fans uh, in the, the arena, right? Like tons of green jerseys out. It's like they're excited, but it's, it's kind of, it, it's hard. Like you give team all that energy, like and then you, you have some things just go sideways like that. It's difficult. It's, uh, the Valiant will play something interesting on defense, so they'll play the triple tank triple support, but now you have the wrecking ball in instead of like whether it's Winston or Reinhardt. So a little bit of a different look here against the Shock. The Shock will just go with what they like. Rascal says, no, I'm not playing Brick. Let me play Batiste. Let me baptize them with them holy water grenades and heal them, you know? Let me use the noob tube. So Sinatra on the point, oh, he gets stunned up from behind there, still able to shield himself up. Was probably more worried about Super at that stage, but interesting position. Looked a little bit disjointed there. I think the Shock made a last minute decision to move into this room, which is named Snacks Ramos, by the way, which is <laughs> oh, great. <yeah. laughs> so good. But yeah, they'll have to regroup a little bit and, uh, and wait for the Sombra to come back. Really come oh, there's going to be the Amp Matrix here that comes out from Rascal. So see if they can get any of the damage through here. Oh, it, it could be nasty now. Sinatra finds Custer. Yeah, the M Matrix was placed a little bit too far forward by the looks of things. The, uh, the, the Valiant was standing in between them and the Matrix, so it doesn't do much there. Charge from Super. Full range. Straight into KSF, who has the hide behind the stand. Get himself a corn dog and wait for his demise. And yeah, two minutes 40 on the clock as the Shock just start to capture the point. Easy Yaki was staggered. Violent to him, exchanging meaningful glances before he was sent back to spawn. And five minutes are on the clock. Five. Now we'll see if uh, after, you know, we make a change here for the Valiant as Fate plays Reinhardt now. I think maybe after Sinatra uses his CMP, we see him play Zarya. And you get into that mirror matchup, so to speak, with three tanks and three supports on both sides. Could be a big EMP. Uh, everyone's grouped up here. Yep, five people. Not Izayaki, but Izayaki didn't have a transcendence. It would have been great. If he'd had one, perhaps enough and, to save them, but and, no. And you'd rather walk into your death there if you're the Valiant than let the car start to move around the corner and get to that box of victory. Uh, you do see Sinatra go back to spawn. He's going to switch off, yeah. How scary is that amplification matrix on this long stretch? I especially when you're trying to engage yourself and you have the Graviton Surge, it's, it's going to be very dangerous. The Valiant needs to be careful not to with a big fit. fire strike or something. Yeah, like and remember, if they push into the matrix and they realize they're in the wrong spot, Custom, they knock him out of speed, him out as fast as he used to be able to. So the Valiant, well, the Shock want the Valiant to commit. Here we go, Amplification Matrix thrown out now, and that shield's not gonna last very long at all. Graviton had to be thrown out. Super Laser Shatter, then the shield. Rascal's immort Immortality Field is taken down, but the damage, too severe. The Shock were inside a grab, yes, but they're able to get damage done still with their primary, secondary fire, and that was enough. Violet finds Izayaki, and that shuts the book on Blizzard World. It shuts the book on the series, ultimately, it's 3-0. And the Valiant now have a chance to get one map to save face, but that's all they'll have. It was a pretty dominant showing for the San Francisco Shock, and they're unlikely to take their foot off the gas. And that California Cup will stay with the San Francisco Shock. Map four is right around the corner. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League.
shot brought the heavy artillery today, and it has oh, shown. So high. That was a uh, dumb lit, as you would say. Yeah. But I mean, they've looked, they've looked so good in this series. 3 0 now. One map away from being done and dusted, and a clean sweep is absolutely on the cards. And there's only uh, one card in the deck, and I that mean, card is the it clean is, sweep. Uh, it has been a dominant performance from the Shock. I think the Valiant uh, today, it looks like they're just they're trying some things out. They potentially had some stuff that worked in uh, scrimmages leading up to the stage. has not worked today here against the Shock. They are taking necessary steps and losses like this, well, they are necessary, especially if you're a team that's trying to rebuild. Forge in the fires of adversity and all that. It sounds nice. It doesn't feel nice. It's been tough for them, no doubt about it. Again, Gibraltar represents an opportunity for them to rally. And I think, uh, I think KSF's only match in season one was on Gibraltar, if I'm not mistaken. That's when they got subbed in against the, the Dagrons, Shanghai, of course. So. But hey, pressure's off, right? All right, so see uh, the Valiant on the attack. As, uh, you see, that'll be point A uh, once we start to get the payload moving. Point B. Hey, it's even got B on it. Yep, poggers. And then uh, to complete the map. All the way the distance you have to go to uh, what was this before you were saying a rocket ship? Yeah, it's just, yeah that's what you're talking about, right? It doesn't space. Yeah, I mean, I assume. Look, the fact that Omnics don't need to recharge implies that fusion power is probably perfected in this yeah, timeline. So I, agree. I have to accept it. They probably battery that powered, probably right? It's not made to really fly that way, but that's fine. Anyway, <laughs> the shock. Okay, so they they don't take the Batiste here. They do take the brig. Maybe they were expecting some more flank action from the Valley, but both teams actually playing, well, we would have called this standard last they, night. Well, they decided to play with uh, Reinhardt on defense here, uh, due to the shock. So uh, usually when you have the Reinhardt on defense, maybe some damage dealers come out from the other side. It's pretty well behaved, isn't it? Reinhardt on defense, they're not being very aggressive at all. I, I think they feel really confident to weather the storm, uh, whether the Valiant run the damage dealers. And I think that the Valiant have gotten off of the payload and not taken this fight in a position. Oh, fight got stunned. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, now, now you're in a tough spot because now you're diving into an area in this close tunnel that is advantageous to the Reinhardt playing team. I mean, here's the thing, the Shock playing together, but Fate is looking for people that are separated or you're gonna try and separate them. And as soon as he does that, just sitting Rascal outside, but... shield bashes him. And yeah, why not spawn camp them? They're I mean, sitting outside. This is... Oh. Man, these guys do not let up, do they? <laughs> nah. <laughs> I don't think the, the Valiant may come out of this low door and be very surprised to find all of the San Francisco shock down there. Is. And this is, I mean, against the, the Valiant, right? I mean, uh, you're going to oh. hear the transcendence used by Izayaki just trying to keep everybody up. That's a big Graviton surge there. Uh, they tried to transcend us to get out. And I watch. Currently, the faces of the Valiants, they adjust themselves in their seats and realize that their opponents intend to make a mockery of them. Oh, I mean, the, the, the shot guys are just kind of, they're, they're laughing at it. I mean, they, they think this is, I mean, look, uh, when I was a, when I was a player and I was like working with teams, I would encourage what we're seeing from the shock. Like if, 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 like, if somebody's not bringing it, like you bring it to them and you let them know about it, right? And, I, I like what we see on the Shock, because there's a lot of the teams that are watching this right now like, oh man, we don't want to play against the Shock. If we start getting beat, we're going to get spawn camp. Like, I know I know some of you out there, your only wishes for these games are that both teams have fun. Sometimes though, one team has a little bit more fun than the other, and that's what the Shock are here to do now. The uh, Shatter from Super, very aggressive. Fate Shield is is destroyed right now. So this is where the Shock get aggressive, but they walk straight in. Super Graviton Surge, Transcendence is out. Do they set up the combo? Fate goes charging in. But the sound arrow was there for the San Francisco Shock. They can hang around in this fight for a little longer. Super getting knocked forward. That might have been from KSS. Right click here is in quite a lot of danger. And he is down. The Shock have bought two and a half minutes of time, though, playing so far forward. Yeah, the Valley will go get the fight win, though. Get out of the spawn. So you do start to make some progress here. It was uh, you know, the Graviton Surge that came out from KSF. They're able to pick up two kills off of the back of that. Just coming in, they make it costly though, right? I mean, coming in the next fight, you will have the Graviton Surge here for Sinatra coming online. With the way Violet builds these transcendences, you imagine we see one of those as well. 50% for Violet, so he's got a ways to go here. The Shock would like to slow this down a little bit. Fate switching to Reinhardt though means he can challenge Super now. We can just walk straight up and try and fight him. Oh, nice. Fate would knock down. It looked like he was about to pin Super there and get the kill, but Super still goes on this wild charge and gets taken down. Teams have traded out their Reinhardt. Though, and Rascal is deep within enemy territory here. Violet then goes for the Transcendence just to buffer them now. 
Rascal also with that rally in play. The Valiant are still looking for more, but they lack their Reinhardt. So Sinatra, a lot of damage available there, and Rascal was the only one caught inside the Graviton space, was trying to follow up, but that grab did not find much. It had to be more from the Valiant. They needed to find more than just one player who didn't even get killed, and this is bad for the Valiant. This is very not good. It was just a great way to play around them, knowing that they had the Graviton Surge. The shock spread out. Rascal's the only one that gets caught inside of it. Fate charges in now. It's his last chance. And the last chance for the entirety of the Valiant in this map to make an attacking difference. But Fate is already down. Custer knocked with the Earth Shatter and removed. And the Valiant is shattered. And I guarantee you, they will not be happy as they get on that bus at the end of the day. But they still have one more half to play. <laughs> My heart aches for my countrymen here, I won't lie. But it seems the Valiant have a ways to go before they are where they need to be. It's a really tough first half, I mean, for the Valiant. I mean, you spent, you know, you had that initial first fight, then you kind of got locked in the spawn for a minute or so, and then you really have one last chance at the end. It, it's, it's almost like you didn't really get a, a chance to play. The Shock were so aggressive taking it to you. And. From the very outset, you can see the shock was serious. When they're three maps up, they still pick that Reinhardt on defense. They play very conservatively close together until they win that first fight. They get that advantage, they push forward, they leverage their ultimate economy lead to keep the, the, the Valiant inside the spawn for a while. It's aggressive, it's flashy, it's cavalier, and it also is absolutely backbreaking and spirit breaking for your opponent. I mean, that's. Uh... It's got to be really difficult to play against, especially when you know, you're down 3-0 in the series already. Hasn't gone well. You've had a lot of blunders and scenarios. You know, the, the moving off the point on Anubis, you know, the, the Graviton Surge getting eaten in Blizzard World. It's been a tough series. Uh, we'll see how the Shock uh, you know, roll out here in offense. The Super Ash, uh, that's a pick I think a lot of people want to see. They won't see that. Uh, you know, if you watch this stream, you've seen the Super McCree. You definitely don't want to see the, the, the Super Ash. Just... <laughs> you see the Treyoven go there with the hook, trying to make it happen. Uh, doesn't get anything. All right. Space already quite low, and I don't know if the defense pack, no, the, uh, the repair pack wasn't used on Space, so he's still quite low, in fact. He has to sort of get involved in this fight anyway. Rascal's... Immortality field has been taken down. The shock just playing nice and close together. Really going for a bit of a shield wall formation, if you if you will. But KSF has charged up. Oh, just a little bit too far. Just a little too far. And then agility drops down as well. The Valiant know at this point they, they may as well go. Yeah, take I the mean... fast track back to spawn and try and find a kill. But yeah, Matt, but, uh, look, it's not the finer points. It really appears to be the fundamentals but, that are holding yeah, Valiant I mean, back it, here. I mean, th this next fight's going to be extremely difficult for the Valiant to win. I mean, you have the Amplification Matrix here from Rascal. Uh, you're gonna have the Transcendence, most likely Sinatra get a grab. Yeah, time for the Amplification Matrix. Rascal pretty much using it for himself here. Sitting back behind it, extra healing would also be nice and he's keeping super topped up. Rascal is a very good dive target here as Batiste, but he's standing inside. That Immortality Field and Fate, try as he might, and he did, make no mistake. He was not able to find the kill. He eventually goes down. Violet picks him up. So the Shock have a main tank, and Super really wants to try and make his presence felt here, but Agility's went in for the shield. Bash, Super's shield is now broken. The Shock may have to retreat, at least into the server room, and wait for their chance to end it. So you have to back out here as well. You're waiting for Sinatra. Is Rascal already has another amplification matrix, and it's going to go down here. Is the arc is missing. This is nasty. You see the shield barely staying alive now. It's going to be the Graviton Surge. By the Shock, they got a lot of use out of that Amp Matrix, and now they push further. Sound Barrier here. Final using the Transcendence once more. And he's going to be on the point there with Super Agility. He's getting a little bit too low to the Swinging Hammer of Super. And now Space and KSF are also in danger. They push too close. Immortality is what the Shock are looking for. And they'd like to inscribe their name into the Stage 2 title book. And that's how you start. The San Francisco Shock make it look very clean. But some of the stuff they did in game was nothing short of dirty. That was, it was nasty. Yeah, I mean, they, they go in with a spawn camp there at the end on Gibraltar, but just a fantastic series start to finish for the Shock. That they'll hold on to the California Cup.
think of Rasko playing Batista. I think it was a huge impact. I think that's really the first great use of him that we've seen in a series. And just a small adjustment, right? You, you're switching out the Brigitte, you're bringing the Batista in. For the healing, you pointed it out. Rasko was doing more healing than even the hardest hitter on his team was doing in terms of damage. And that is an extremely good metric. San Francisco, a team that likes to play aggressively. Someone like Rascal and Batista is able to facilitate that, keep them safe as they go right at their opponents and try and shake them off balance. So that is quite impressive. It's a hero that suits their style very well. But now let's hear a little bit more from the team themselves. We'll head down to the floor with Mika. Thanks, guys. I got Moth down here. Everybody give it up for Moth. That's right. A clean sweep must feel good. So congratulations. And I know that you guys maybe didn't take the stage final last stage, but that clearly didn't break your spirit. And you guys made an amazing showing today. Would you say that that near loss like put a fire under you and you're fighting back even harder? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, that was those that playoffs was the first best of sevens I'd ever played on stage, so it was a great learning experience for us. Um, uh, yeah, I think moving forward, we'll be able to clutch out those rounds next time. Absolutely, and moving forward, we're going to be seeing probably a lot more comps with more DPS heroes, and that's been pretty fun for everybody to be watching. Uh, do you like this new meta, or are you, you know, missing missing the goats? Uh, I mean, right now it's not too much different for us, uh, but I think we can adapt really quickly to anything that happens. Uh, we'll see where it goes in the next couple of weeks, and uh, I think I think we'll be able to do well. Absolutely, and you've obviously already started to do well, so congratulations. Everybody, give it up for Moth, and especially that giant Moth head back there. This is great. <laughs> I love our fans, you guys. All right, back to you guys. Is there anything funnier than holding a cardboard cutout of someone's face next to that actual person? It's pretty great, right? It's probably it. It's probably some love it. Stuff, that's, that's pretty funny. Let's have a look at our player of the match. Uh, yeah. Start to wrap things up here. Brought to you by Omen by HP. And we've already talked about it. This is a guy that deserves his honors big time. Rascal from the San Francisco shot. And again, the Batiste play was interesting. We heard, just heard Moth say they haven't changed much, but this no. small change seems to have made a big difference. I mean, uh, he's, he was great using all of the new abilities. Uh, obviously, Batiste is a new hero. Everything in his toolkit, you see the immortality field here, and this is where the big amplification matrix goes down. It's a lot of damage going through there. Big difference maker. I think, uh, you know, two deaths prevented. I think that, you know, you kind of look damage prevented about, you know, 500 there. The damage amplified 1,800 uh, in terms of damage. That's and pretty big. Now, over the course of one match, that may not be that exciting. The, the, the fact is, is that that happens obviously in those short moments, you know, during the Matrix itself. It happens in these, yeah. in these Burst. moments that turn the fight. It's not like a, a Discord, uh, you know, amplifying stat, which runs over the course of a series. So that damage is generally more impactful. It's to win fights there and then, and not just to make things stronger over the course of a series. So congratulations, of course, to Rascal. And the Shock are looking very good. You know what's coming up next, though? What? That I'm kind of getting excited for. The Revenant Fisher returns again. Uh, you can take revenge as many times yeah. as you like. I think there's like there's no statue of limitation on that one. Takes on the Los Angeles Gladiators man, who already look really good. Yeah, always a spicy matchup. I know the Gladiators did look uh, very good in their match uh, the other day. I do think though that you know, look look for Soul Dynasty. I mean, they get that big win against NYXL in the playoffs.